NASA is getting ready to launch a historic mission, sending a spacecraft closer to the sun than ever before. The Parker Solar Probe is launching in less than 24 hours. It will embark on a nearly seven year venture. It is hoped that it will be the first spacecraft to directly come in contact with a star. The $1.5 billion mission is expected to change the way we understand the sun. This gutsy mission calls for United Launch Alliance's Delta IV heavy rocket, one of the most powerful rockets on Earth. And all of that power is needed to send the Parker Solar Probe, which is only about the size of a small car, to a destination some 90 million miles away, where no spacecraft has gone before. When the moon eclipsed the sun last summer, millions got a rare glimpse of the corona. That fiery halo is the sun's mysterious outer atmosphere, where temperatures are hundreds of times hotter than at its surface. And just look at that corona. That is incredible. Among the starstruck was Dr. Nikki Fox, who is now leading NASA's mission to study the corona. And it'll be hard for me to, to tell whether it's actually the rocket or my heart that's pounding. Fox's team will use that Delta IV heavy rocket to send the Parker solar probe closer to the sun than ever ever before. It will dip into the corona 24 times, passing within 4 million miles of the sun's surface. When I say this, they go, gee, that's not that close. But if you put um, the Earth and the sun in the end zones of a football field, Parker Solar Probe would be on the four yard line. And so that's very close. Fox hopes to learn more about what powers the solar wind, the charged particles that accelerate towards planet Earth at more than a million miles per hour. How can a solar flare affect somebody here on Earth? Many ways, actually. The, the big space weather events can put a lot of radiation in around the poles. Your GPS will, will not be as, as accurate. It can take away your satellite TV. Yeah, you don't want to take away people's TV. Particularly not on Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> this mission to the sun was first proposed 60 years ago, around the same time an astrophysicist named Gene Parker came up with the theory of the solar wind. I'm flattered, naturally. That's about all I can say. <laughs> Parker, now 91 years old, is the first living person to have a NASA mission named after them. We were able to take him into the clean room and say, Parker, meet Parker. These are the final instruments here. And it was a lovely, lovely moment where he kind of saw this marvel of technology, as he called it, that is going to go and really study everything he predicted. It's an honor to meet you, sir. Scientists at Johns Hopkins University's Applied Physics Lab spent more than a decade developing a four and a half inch thick heat shield to withstand temperatures of around 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Hotter than lava. Is Hotter it's than be lava, going. absolutely. That's on the front side of the heat shield, but the instruments that are in the shade on the main body of the spacecraft, they're at about 80 degrees. Is there a return mission for the probe? Oh no, that's a sad day. Uh, so eventually we'll run out of fuel and we won't be able to continue to keep that heat shield aligned. And then I like to think that she will join the corona and orbit the sun forever. The probe will make its first pass of the sun in November, and it will be flying. At one point, it'll reach speeds of 430,000 miles per hour. And to put that into perspective, that's like going from Washington, D.C. to Tokyo, Japan in under a minute, making it the fastest man-made object ever. Anne-Marie? Omar Villafranca, thank you.